So we're going to pick up again where we left off about coordinates. So straight up is 90 degrees. So if you go out and look at something and it's like 85 degrees from above the, um, above the horizon, that means it's almost straight up. If it's going to be 30 degrees up, then that means it's up a third of the way. 45 degrees up means it's up 40, it's, uh, it is up like halfway to straight up. So you imagine you go out and you look and, and look halfway to straight up, and that's going to be an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, so an angle of 10 degrees is really low in the sky. Well, this is one way of doing it. This, this is what we call the altitude in azimuth or the horizon coordinates. Altitude is how high above the horizon it is. So in this example here, the altitude is 60 degrees. And so we would say 60 degrees altitude is two-thirds of the way between the horizontal and straight up. Uh, we don't call it straight up. We call it zenith. Zenith is the term that means straight up. Things in the sky rise in the east and they set in the west. Well, they don't all go over straight overhead. They sometimes cross, you know, someplace. They rise in the east and they cross here. Uh, so the highest they are in the sky is when they're in the midway between east and west. Well, that would be if you draw a line from north to south. If we draw a line from north to south and project that onto the sky, we call that the meridian. So the meridian is this imaginary line across the sky running from north to south. So the highest anything is in the sky is when it's on the meridian. Well, we don't want to just say it's at a certain altitude because over the course of, of the night, things move. So we want to give what we also call the azimuth, altitude to how high above the horizon. Azimuth is what direction you're facing. So we start at north, and we say north is zero azimuth. So we measure an angle around this way. Well, that's right angle. So if you face east, you're facing right angles to north, and so that's 90 degrees. Okay. If something is due south, that's opposite north, so that is 180 degrees. West is 270 degrees. I, I know it's 90 degrees this way, but it's 270 degrees this way. We always measure to the east. And so if something is in the southeast, well, that's between 90 degrees and 180. If you're exactly halfway between 90 degrees and 180, that would be 135 degrees. And so we would say that the asthma is 135 degrees and the altitude 60. That tells you face southeast and look up 60 degrees. And that was where you'd look. So, so if I were to say, hey, I want you to go out and look at something tonight, I would tell you what direction to face and how high up to look to see it. That's the horizon coordinates. That sounds like a fantastic thing to do, except for one problem. Earth is round. So different people on different parts of the Earth look up in the sky and they see something different. The other thing is the Earth's rotating. So that means that what's overhead now is not going to be overhead later. Things are rising in the east and setting in the west. So they're always moving. So you would need to know exactly what time something is a certain altitude in azimuth. The other thing is, as Earth goes around the sun, that shifts our entire perspective of the sky. So altitude in azimuth of, of an object is only good for a fraction here of a second or so at one particular moment in time, uh, from one particular location. So it's very much unique to the observer. We want to... So what we do is we imagine the sky as being a big sphere here. Okay, and again, you know, if you're at one location of the Earth, you look up, you see certain stars. At a different location at the same time, you see different stars. So you might have a star over here that someone in the northern hemisphere looks south to see. Someone in the southern hemisphere looks to the north to see. Someone over here might look to the east to see. And someone on the other side of the world might look west to see it. 
So it's, it's going to be different for everybody. So we want to have coordinates on the sky. So well, the sky is this big round thing, you know, uh, we can imagine all the stars being, being, being on a sphere around the Earth. Well, it's not really a sphere around the Earth, but it makes it easy to map. So we can draw what look like latitude and longitude lines across the entire sky. So we have longitude lines, and then we have latitude lines. Now, like on Earth, latitude is measured north and south of the equator. As the Earth is sitting here spinning, then the equator marks the midpoint between north and south pole. And so everywhere on that equator, you see, as, as the Earth rotates, you see stars right along there appear overhead. If you're the north pole of the Earth, because the Earth's rotating, then you see the same thing overhead all the time, and the whole sky looks like it's going around that point. So it looks like the whole sky has a north pole and a south pole and an equator. So, in fact, we call that the North Celestial Pole, the South Celestial Pole, and the Celestial Equator. On Earth, latitude is measured relative to the equator. The equator is considered zero. Where we live here in Fort Worth, uh, Dallas uh, 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 area, okay, that's about 32 and a half, depending on where you are, in Tarrant County, Southern part of Tarrant County is close to 32 degrees. Northern part of Tarrant County is close to 33 degrees latitude. And so that's going to be north of the Earth's equator. Now, the interesting thing is this is useful for navigation purposes because if you're 33 degrees above the, north, the Earth's equator, you look up, you see th something in the sky, 33 degrees north of the celestial equator. So that's one reason that they do this is is it helps you with navigation if you have a map of the sky you can look up and see well what declination is overhead and that would tell you what latitude you are longitude celestial longitude now on earth longitudes measure east and west of the prime meridian well what's so prime about the prime meridian well, well nothing really it's just an arbitrary starting point and you measure east and you measure west of it um, so in the sky, we want to have these lines that run from the North Pole to the South Pole, and we want to measure. Okay, now they decided instead of calling it celestial latitude and celestial longitude, it's called declination, that's your latitude, and then right ascension, that's your longitude. Now, the other thing that's different about the, the um, celestial longitude, the right ascension is, instead of measuring east and west, you know, they realize if you're standing out there looking, the entire, as Earth rotates, the entire sky looks like it's passing overhead. So if you wait 24 hours, yeah, I know the sun comes up, but there's, st there's still stuff up there. Um, everything goes in one direction. So what they decided to do was draw a line, call that zero, and then just measure in one direction to the east of that. And so it doesn't go east or west. It just starts and goes all the way around. Okay, so right ascension has a starting point and it just measures in one direction all the way around. Declination measures north and south of the celestial equator. Well, we don't call it north and south, we call it plus and minus. So if something is plus 45 degrees declination, that means it's 45 degrees north of the celestial equator. Now right ascension, we pick a starting point and we just measure in one direction. Except we don't measure in degrees, we measure in hours, minutes, and seconds. And so that would be, that's one of the things that confuses students. It's like you look up in the sky, and if you look to the north, you would see a star, and the star might be like two degrees, it might be like 30 degrees to the north, and you'd say that's 30 degrees to the north. But if it's 30 degrees to the east, you don't say 30 degrees to the east, you say it's a difference of two hours. So why would you measure in hours, minutes, and seconds? Well, that's because Earth is rotating. Remember I said you use this for not navigation purposes? What would happen is you would find a star, and if it's not directly overhead, uh, you would measure how, you'd figure out how long it would take until it's overhead. And if it's going to be in the future, that means that you happen to be a certain distance west of the prime meridian, if it's going to be in the other direction, you're going to be that far east of the prime meridian. 
And so you would measure hours, minutes, and seconds, and then convert that to degrees. And so it was easier for astronomers, uh, particularly the early ones that were using this for navigation purposes, only to measure in hours, minutes, and seconds. And there's kind of a piece of a map of the sky, you know, that shows the celestial equator across the middle. Okay, here's the declinations. So we have a star that's right up here, and that star has a declination of about 18 degrees. The right ascensions are marked over here. So this is zero hours. So that's zero. That's 23 hours, 22. So, so the numbers are going bigger this way. And so what happens is right here, uh, this star, uh, uh, if you look uh, uh, with the, the, the right ascensions, this is 14 hours right there. That's 15 hours. So that's about a quarter of the way. Well, we don't say 14 and a quarter, we say 14 hours and 15 minutes. And so that's how you would, uh, that's how you would read that sort of thing. Okay. Does that make sense? Well, I wish we were in class in person, because then you could say yes or no, and I could give more examples. But one of the first labs that you're going to be doing is celestial coordinates, and it gives you a little more practice. Now, notice that on this map, and on the star maps you're going to use, west is on the right side and east is on the left side. North at the top, south at the bottom, but east and west are backward. Well, why is that the case? Well, because this is meant to be held up over your head, looking out. Most maps that you learn to read are looking down onto the earth. This is on the earth looking up and out. So east and west are backwards. So this way is west, that way is east this way is north, and that way is south. And so that'll, that'll help you when you're answering some of the questions on those lamps. Okay. Next topic we're going to take up is going to be motion in the sky. And so that'll be the subject of the next little mini lecture.